After her, you can come. Namaskaram. My yes. question is about um, being here for the last two months and that transition back to it almost feels like there's a density or a blanket of the Western consciousness or thinking or that I'll be flying back to. And not only that, having a sangha of many, many people that are most of them professional seekers themselves and wanting so much to know what's next and what now. I feel so much for them because I'm one of them. And have held a space of sort of a sanctuary for that. Now I feel I feel the tremendous hope. Oh. Take your time. We have lots of time. I don't know if I can express the feeling of how precious this teaching is and how absolutely imperfection its timing is. Having held that space of a professional seeker for ever, 69 years, the longing for it is tremendous on the planet. And when I am speaking of it and sharing it, just to, to give due respect to its source. So my question is, I need a bit of confirmation for myself in terms of how much porosity or conformity or corporeality has happened for me during this time. Because when I think to go back, in friends, in family, and in the people I serve in the community, there's so much suffering. And I remember you talking about being porous in Tiru, the Namalai, and it really piqued my interest because my girlfriends in particular who are very, what they call, empathic. And what I think it has been is a porosity because they're not really present in the body, so they're taking on so much energy from people. And so I, I want to kind of have a confirmation. Yes, there is a shift in myself and my own body to be able to face what I'm going home to face. Wherever you go, actually, whether you're here in Rishikesh, you're in your home country, wherever you are in the world, the soul is the soul, is the soul, is the soul, is the soul. Is the soul, you know? It is the Antar Atman, it is the Antar Guru. You can't run away from it. You can't leave it behind here and go. So it's going to be with you. The point is to remember the living presence at all times, but it's not about identifying. It is not about I am. It's about I'm here and I'm this. And in that, to bring yourself to this state of I'm here, I'm this. Even to go so far as to say I'm this, in surrender to the soul here. And this posture is your absolute, let's say, it's a spiritual guarantee and it doesn't have a limit. So it is like a real solid thing. When I look at you now and I see how you were a year ago, that progress and that strengthening, it's, it's, it's very solid, it's very real and it's very much a more solid present person, no question about it. I feel there is a lot of strength there. You yourself have 
been a seeker, as we say, a professional seeker almost all your life and you've seen all kinds of satsangs and uh, you've been to pretty much whatever there is on this planet and teachers and, and groups and all of that, what you will have seen is that when there is any ambition attached to that experience, the experience will delude you. So, there cannot be an ambition attached to it of bringing it to anybody else. First, it has to be concretized in your system because otherwise it will start to dissipate. Which is why I have said, take some time, even if it is a year or two, it doesn't matter to consolidate within yourself, to consolidate through the practice of reminding yourself in every moment of the living presence of the soul and being in surrender to it, not identifying with it. It's a very fundamental difference. And that realization that you have now, after, after an immersive, after coming to practically every single satsang in Tiruvannamalai and every single satsang here in Rishikesh. It's, a, it's quite a body of knowledge that has, you can say, materially entered into you and a body of experience as well. Now it's about consolidating, actually solidifying, actually being present because you've been spaced out in a moon suit for a large part of your adult life. You, you also have to settle in and, and take, take residence in this system, be here, solidly present, now, here, each moment, this moment, this moment, give it a bit of time so that it solidifies here. Let the others be, first it's about you. When you solidify, when this system is entirely coherent, you will be able to actually let's say, materially influence the matter of the other through a transmission of coherence and solidity. As in the emotional, the more you are present and in surrender, surrender is your big magic word, surrender and love. These are the two words. And in that surrendered state, the emotional being will, will deepen, it will widen and it will be mastery in place. These are things which need some time to settle. And the suffering around you will reduce if you go into that state of surrender. It is about the sadhana first and it, it needs some time. The details of how you will handle that big Sangha that is around you because you've got many, many, many hundreds, I think, of people that are, you know, your students. That is the next step to address. We will address that, no question about it. There are also many spiritual masters who have spoken about their Sanghas and how to take this teaching to their Sanghas. Because they realize, especially the spiritual masters, they realize it. They, they really do. You know, because finally it's about reducing the suffering of others. It's not about which master is bigger than the other, who cares? I mean, when you're dealing with that kind of suffering, you don't really care about anything, you just want to get rid of the suffering around you, right? So now it's about what means are there. First step is the spiritual masters themselves now have to, because it is a new teaching, you know that, you've been there and done that. And one has to first, live it oneself for a while at least, give it a little bit of time. And when there is a shaking and you don't feel that you can connect with the soul, bend down, bend down and it'll come. If it still doesn't come, try to imagine you're sitting in this satsang here, it will come. This is the way forward now. So many spiritual masters are asking how to take this forward, what to do with their students because they're seeing that their students are all floating away and they, they understand that it's not the way forward. We will find a way, we will all sit together and in fact even with you and we will find ways and means by which we can actually transmit this teaching so that it reaches a larger section of the 
as you know, in 18 years I didn't even allow a website, like in today's day and age. And I'm very tech savvy. I did not want this to go anywhere until we were sure and clear and had the solidity of the experience. Now we know that it's, it's solid. It's clearly not something which is going to be quiet, no question. Also, you know, being here in India, I've had to... I'm saying a lot of things that are ruffling a lot of feathers. What I say about Kundalini Shakti, what I say about Neo Advaita, there are lots of gurus that are furious with me. There are not just Neo Advaita gurus, there are also Kundalini gurus, they are furious. Who does she think she is? What does she have to say? So all of that has got to be contained also. And I know that this teaching brings relief, finally, it brings the soul back, it brings you back to your Master, to your Divinity. Yes, after Him you can come then.